Hey guys, and welcome to the first video in this series looking at how to use Pydantic for data validation. Now, this is something I've been using for I'd probably say a number of years now. It's a super powerful, really easy to use package, which basically lets you represent entities in a really nice, straightforward way. So without kind of going through the contents first, let's just look at the following case here. Imagine you want a way in your code to represent a user. Now in practice, this could be effectively anything. It could be a person, it could be a car, it could be a vehicle. But let's just suppose we have this basic idea of a user. And imagine a user has to have a name, an age. Uh, we want a variable to say whether they passed an induction or not, so a true or false or a boolean. And a way of representing how many years service they've had. This could be an integer or it could be none if they've, I guess, not started yet. Now, you could do a custom class and put loads of methods in for validation, or you could use a dictionary or, I don't know, a list of tuples or whatever fancy way you want. But Pydantic's basically here for situations like this. If you want to represent some entity, some thing, and you want to be strict about what types they have, Pydantic basically handles all of that and gives you nice, powerful validation along the way. So for this first video, we're going to look at creating this simple user here. So we want name to be a string, age to be an integer, past induction to be a boolean, and then years service to be an integer or none. Along the way, we'll look at how to build a basic model, how to handle multiple types, and then how to do defaults and optionals here. So I've already got my pip installed. If you don't, it's simply going to be pip install Pydantic. And we're going to start off, now generally the way we do this, is we say from Pydantic, and we're going to be importing base model, which is just down here. And the way this works is that all the validation of like, you know, checking these different types, that's built into the base model. So what we do is we build a class to basically represent this, which inherits from base model, and then all of the validation happens because we've inherited from this here. So what I suppose we do is, let's see, let's move all this up here, and let's just start kind of by doing name and age. We'll look at some basics, how to create it, etc., and then go from there. So we'll say, here is a class called user, and you, sir, you inherit from base model. And then let's just say a class uh, to represent a simple user like this. Okay. Now, let's just quickly do this little kind of couple of dots here. And then if I print uh, dir, short for directory, of user and hit run. Now you'll see because I've inherited from this here, when I ask, okay, what attributes of methods does user have? Obviously, this is really big because I've inherited from base model. So all of the validation stuff, that is already here inside this class because of this inheritance here. So just something that's kind of, you know, worth thinking about. Um, now, let's start off by doing name. The way we do this is we define the name of the attribute or the field, and we do a little column and then say something like this. Name is going to be str here. Now we can go ahead and do age. And do age you are equal to an integer. Now what we can do underneath is let's just say my user is equal to a user like this. And we see here we can do this like star star data. Um, but tell you what, if I just run it like this with nothing, yeah, we can see here it's complaining because it's missing, in this case, missing name and missing age. So let's go ahead and do name is equal to John. Let's run it again. Same error, but this time it's saying, okay, missing age. So straight away, we're seeing Pydantic get to work here. We've tried to create a user, but we haven't given it an age. So this is Pydantic basically saying like, okay, yeah, a field is required. We're missing age. Okay, so let's now go ahead and pass in age. Let's say John is age 30. Let's clear the screen and run this guy again. Okay, looks good. No issues there at all. Uh, one thing you can do is we go ahead and print user. Now, bear in mind, like, for a custom class, if you just go ahead and print this, you get this, like, you know, if this didn't inherit from base model, you'd have something like class user object at some memory address. But because we've inherited from base model, there are methods built into this. So when you print it, you get this nice handy printout straight away, which is kind of cool. Uh, another way you can do it as well, uh, let's suppose we had... Let's see if I can kind of do this a bit of a hacky way. Let's suppose we had our data in some kind of class like this. Sorry, not class, in some kind of dictionary like this here. 
And then let's get rid of this. Make this into a valid key by doing this. Same for this here. And do this. So imagine you had your data in like a dictionary like this. Okay. Uh, one thing you could do, if I put this, let's do this one, put this below here and get rid of this for a sec. If your data kind of comes in this format as a dictionary, we can actually use the unpacking. So if you do star star of A and run again, then yeah, no problem at all. We can use this kind of keyword unpacking here or quags really to basically say, okay, take this and then kind of, you know, unpack these by keys. So this name key value pair, that's going to go to the name field, this age key value pair, you are going to go to the age field here. So yeah, you can do it kind of in a few different ways really, but just, I guess for the sake of this video, we'll use this simple one here and put this down here. And for now I will get rid of this and talk a bit more about the validation. So we've said in our model that name has to be a string, age has to be an integer. What would happen if I did something like this? Let's try age 30 as a string. Okay, yeah, no problem at all. Let's go ahead and then do user.age and let's pass this through the type function and we should see this is indeed an integer. So when we have situations like this, Pydantic's pretty happy to take this and convert it into an integer because it can. If you were to do the int function over this, the int function has no problem at all, compa you know, not comparing, sorry, converting this to an integer of 30. However, you might know this already, if you were to ask the int function to convert something like this, it's not going to be happy. And that's also the same for Pydantic. So we run this again. There we go. Validation error for user age. Input should be a valid integer, unable to pass string as an integer. So it gives you a bit of information here as to why it wasn't able to do this. But yeah, just something to bear in mind, really. It will try and convert this into the type that you've said. But yeah, if not, it's going to be throwing an error. So just something to bear in mind. Okay, now let's bring in our other ones. So we're going to do past induction. So this guy is going to be, let's see, uh, let's do past induction here. Uh, this wants to be a Boolean. So again, just something to note, let's try and run this here. So because I've now passed this in, hit run. Oh, sorry, hit run properly, there we go. Okay, same thing as earlier. It's complaining because we haven't passed this value in really. So that, yeah, it's like, okay, I don't have passed induction, so we need it. So let's say passed induction. Uh, let's say, yes, this person has passed induction. Hit run, okay, looks good. And now we can do our last one here. So this is gonna be one of the first things I wanna kind of cover, to be honest. Uh, it's the idea of a default or an optional. So I'm not gonna do this exactly in the right order, but I will cover all of them. If we say from typing, go ahead and import optional here. Now, admittedly, there's a bit of confusion between the job of a default and the job of an optional. So I'll cover them both as best as I can. So let's start off with years service here, okay? And we'll come to this, I promise, but I'll kind of cover defaults, optionals, kind of roughly in the same variable. So if I say year service, this is going to be, first of all, it's going to be an int, but if I do equals zero here. So what we're basically saying this time is year service, this field is gonna be of type integer, and it's gonna to default to a value of zero. So if I, uh, not clear down there, if I clear the screen down here, and hit run. Even though I didn't pass in year service, because we've said int equals zero, we basically said here that we don't actually have to pass this in. And if it's not passed in, then just set it as zero here. So let's say, for example, uh, for a default, let's do, helps kind of define these and kind of write them out as well, to be honest. So we can say, um, if not passed in, set to some value, okay, this here. Right, now what we can do, let's go ahead and now change this up a little bit. So if I was to say this down here and then do years service is equal to optional int equals zero like this here. Let's go ahead and try the same thing. Okay, no problem at all. So from this point of view, it looks exactly the same, but what I could do Let's go ahead and now do something like this. Years service equals none, like this here. So if I run this, we can see in this case here, none isn't an integer. 
So why is it let me do this? That's the job of optional here. So the job of optional really is to effectively say, we can pass none for this thing here. And if we do, don't cause an issue with it. Whereas if you were to pass none to this one, it's going to complain because none, yeah, there we go. In this case here, input should be a valid integer. So that's basically the difference. So, you know, imagine our user could have maybe, um, maybe they've just started, they've been here for a few weeks. So it's quite reasonable to say, yeah, they've got zero years service. But what if maybe they haven't been set up in the system yet? Maybe they haven't started work yet. We might want to say, actually, they've not started at all. So maybe we could pass in the years service as none, just to reflect that they haven't actually started working for the company. So if we do, let's run this again, like this here, then it's like, yeah, okay, no problem. We can say years service is none because we've defined this as an optional here. So I'll write this over here to clarify it as well. So we can say, let's maybe do effectively the same as default, but one big key difference, but we can pass none. That's basically the difference. So sort of similar, you know, we can set some default value here and it will take this maybe if I did, um, like if I didn't pass it in at all, I think that's kind of where the similarity stops really. If you don't pass anything in, it acts the same as a default. However, you can pass none and it won't kick off. Whereas with this one, if you do pass none, it does kick off because it's the incorrect type. So just something to bear in mind, optionals are there for when you basically want to say, this may or may not exist. And if it doesn't exist, don't bother setting this like default value as zero. Just go ahead and set it to none. Again, yeah, fairly, I don't know, not a super, super common edge case, but it's something that's pretty important to know. Um, now what I wanna do, we've done defaults, we've done optionals. How about multiple types? So let's suppose, for example, let's do one more here. I think for this one, we'll do years service as a way to sort of prove we can do multiple types. So years service is getting some work done, isn't it? So let's suppose this time, maybe years service, we want the idea to say, okay, maybe it could be one week, or you could pass in something like two or three, right? Um, so we could do, rather than end, we could say float, or we could say string. So let's go ahead and run this now. So bear in mind, because I've just done this as none, yeah, it's not happy with that, no problem at all. But what we could do, let's pass in one. And yeah, that's fine. Let's pass in 1.5. It's fine with that as well. Or maybe, I don't know, I've only been there for one week. And then, yeah, there we go. Yeah, save us one week. So if you just use this pipe operator, it's pretty happy just to say, this particular field, this could be an int, float, or a string. It can be any of those three and don't really care which one it is. Um, one thing you can do as well, which is quite nice, let's take in from typing import optional, we'll also say list as well. Uh, let's say something like awards here. So what you could do for this, if I was to do awards list of string, uh, let's pass in something like uh, awards here. Uh, we could say awards is equal to uh, I don't know, sorry, I'm being very unimaginative. <laughs> Let's just say awards level one and level two. And then, yeah, that's fine as well. So you can do typing like this. So you could say, for example, like uh, this award, this can be a list of something and that's something, they must be strings. Um, you know, I don't know why you would have an int, but you could, you know, if you want to do something like this, that's, that's fine. So if I did something like five, that's fine as well. Whereas if we didn't have this or int bit, hit run, then again, Pydantic is gonna realize that inside this thing here that's supposed to be a list of strings, I've passed in string, string, int, and then, yeah, the validation kicks off. It's been pedantic or, or Pydantic, if you wanna use the pun, I suppose. And there we go. So that is my episode one of how to use Pydantic to build a simple model. I'm gonna make this into a fairly lengthy series just because it's something I've been using an awful lot. And I think it's a horrendously powerful library to use, especially for having your data like consistent and clean. And if you're writing software that evolves around representing things such as users or representing JSON that comes back from an API or representing basically anything, if you want consistency, like validation, safety, security around those entities, 
to me, it just screams as being the best option. Uh, you can do post-validation. You can be really specific and say things like, okay, I want this to be between five and 10 letters, not have any numbers and contain a space. No problem at all. You can go ahead and do that. You can be really specific about the sort of validation you do. You could make like a base version of this and then inherit from that so you can have multiple types of validation. You can get pretty complex. And again, I think it's a really fantastic library. And if you've got any specific parts of Pydantic you wanna see, feel free to ping us a comment. And of course I can get around to making a video on your chosen topic. Cheers for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this and see you all in the next video and have a great weekend.